Hi, I'm Rigor. This is Your Right, and today let's discuss a hot topic. Before all that though, be sure to like the video if you like it, share it if you think others would like it, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and subscribe if you want to see more. Now, today's video isn't a huge idea, but it's something that came to mind recently that could be very useful, so I'm just making this video because I can, really. It's not groundbreaking, it's not revolutionary, but it's just something I thought was cool, so let's have a little chat about it. So, Cinder. It's kind of up in the air how they're gonna use her, especially in Volume 9. We've talked previously how it's unsure what the focus of Volume 9 will even be. Is it gonna be entirely focused on the island? Is it gonna jump between the island? and vacuo? Are there going to be elements like time skips too? These are all things we have no way of knowing as of yet, meaning that we sort of have to operate as if any could happen, which does allow some freedom because there's no way to say we're wrong or right yet. All of these can still kind of work in this scenario though, which is actually kind of fun. And it all comes down to, like I mentioned, the involvement of Cinder. We know that Tyrion and Mercury went ahead to vacuo, and surely they'll do some scheming and plotting. There's a decent chance they'll pose a smaller threat to vacuo, causing unrest and trouble ahead of Salem making her next move to go there as well. The time scale for that happening, who knows, but just like with Atlas, she sent people ahead to start planning makes sense. Because of how the finale played out, Cinder left with Salem in Atlas, but both can fly. So basically, we have no idea of the plan. Interestingly, and this is probably forgotten by many, but not me, Salem did have a plan for Vacuo. She mentioned it a long time ago. She mentioned it back in Volume 6, that their next target was supposed to be Vacuo. And other people knew it too. Cinder mentioned also that they were meant to be hitting Vacuo next, so perhaps they're going with the original plan. Though, to be fair, those plans were created when Hazel and Watts were still alive, so there's a good chance they would have played a decent role in those events and now they're gone, so plans may have also changed. And the point of discussing that is, let's say the plans did change, there's a good chance that the Vacuo plans now don't necessarily involve Cinder at all. But equally, it could have changed now with the developments in 8 and still involve Cinder heading there next, we don't really know. The point of discussing this is thinking if Salem is heading back to her castle to regroup and make more creations now, or is she going to do something else? She could walk into Vacuo right now, especially with the staff, she honestly just could, but I doubt she will. She's probably going to go back and regroup, and while she's doing that, Tyrion and Mercury can mess things up a little bit, cause some trouble, and set up for her arrival just like they did with Atlas. But this brings up Cinder, so presumably she goes back to the castle with Salem, but is she useful staying there? Who knows, perhaps Salem wants to keep her under her thumb, I can see that as being an option. But also, Cinder knows that the refugees escaped to Vacuo, and that includes Winter now. So we know Cinder would be very interested in going to Vacuo if she could. Having escaped Salem's Wrath for now, she may be in a good place to lobby for her going, asking for Salem's favour, especially after bringing her the relics. Not to mention, whether they have intel or not, it stands to reason that the Summer Maiden is also in Vacuo. So that means that there's two Maidens sitting there in Vacuo, and you know what that means for Cinder. In fact, that would make Vacuo probably her most desired destination on the planet right now, a chance to get those powers. We know it's a massive driving force for her, and as far as she would probably know, there's two in one place right now, and even if there isn't, she definitely knows one is there. The only other target she could have would be Raven, and I really doubt she's gonna go hunting down Raven all alone with no intel on where she is, and a very low chance of being successful given Raven's ability to flee if need be. So basically, as far as Cinder is concerned, Vacuo now has a giant target painted on it. There's nothing she could want more. And she can lobby that with Salem because, again, she is still Salem's best chance to get those powers, the ones that she actually will need to get into the vault in Vacuo anyway. So sending Cinder there to get those powers is still going to be part of the plan anyway, you would assume. Basically, this is a long way of saying that, be it in the aftermath of seeing it after a time skip, from the main girls just arriving back, or if we see it go down and we see the events in Vacuo and there's a battle there, it would be a huge waste of potential not to send Cinder to Vacuo. And it's actually for one big reason, and that reason is the sand. Cinder now uses her maiden powers for all kinds of magic things, including just summoning weapons that she wants. She does it all the time now. She's a long way past needing to superheat sand to make glass weapons. But she once did. That was her method of fighting once upon a time. It was her immediate go-to before she was a maiden and actually after she was a partial maiden. She still went back to this world to fight. So if we take this concept and run with it, she doesn't have to do this anymore. She doesn't have to have sand on hand to make weapons appear, even glass weapons that she likes. She can just do it at a thought. That's fine. But but the ability to manipulate sand with heat to make glass through superheating is a core part of her combat even before she had powers, so we can expand on that idea. 
because establishing that that was almost second nature to her at one point, now she has a lot more heat and a lot more power at her fingertips than she did, and we could be talking about a place that is literally made of sand. In a practical sense, she has no reason to rely on this technique, but it could be awesome for us. Imagine Cinder, who is growing more and more powerful and more and more unhinged as we go, is suddenly in an environment where everything around her, the very ground we're walking on, is a potential weapon for her. And admittedly, yes, we've seen like this explosion in the distance thing she can just make the ground explode I know but it's more fun we can play with this element add the heat and the explosions to the sand and combine these effects because if you add in the maiden powers to this concept of sand to glass you have the potential for some amazing creative and really different fight scenes and spectacles because let's face it cinder fighting with swords we've seen a lot cinder doing more firebending martial arts is really cool and I'm glad to see it being more prominent but if you took that concept and applied it somewhere like Vacuo, you could do horrific and inventive battles all over the place. Imagine Cinder walking up to a defense force and she puts her hands in the ground and suddenly glass spears shoot up from the sand under their feet and she decimates a whole squad. Or she summons a small sandstorm and turns it all into glass shards that just whip through people. She doesn't need sand to do this anymore technically, she does moves a little bit like this already with her maiden powers, but you have this great potential to meld these concepts and really pull the environment in to the battles, that's always a bonus. Because what you can say is then, well, okay, she can summon these glass shards and throw them out of nowhere. Sure, she can already do that and make them explode because magic, okay. But let's say that using the environment, now you can go a lot bigger with that. Rather than focusing your magic energy into making these things and throwing them, you funnel it all into the existing landscape and do crazy stuff. In the end of the day, it is magic and you can just hand wave it because we haven't seen things like this before and it's something new and something new is cool, especially when it ties into the background of a character. And then that opens up the conversation about using more maiden powers and even more dust to interact with the environment around you. That's always really fun and it sets up great visuals and ideas for the future. Things like the maiden summoning lightning to blast something metal to electrocute someone down the way. That's cool, we haven't seen them do that. The same goes into flash freezing rushing water, so it could be like spears or it could make walkways, things like that. Things we haven't really done with these powers before. Because all of that, more than making sense with the powers or whatever, if you want to argue that point, is it's just interesting to put on show. It's a visual medium at the core of a fight, whether it be the powers making sense or the choreography being good, all those things matter, but at the end of the day, you want it to look good. And that's at the core of this, opening up for fun visuals. At the moment, maiden fighting is basically just throwing blanket elements at each other in blasts and making weapons. So you make a sword and you slash with it or you throw fire at them and that's sort of it. So adding a different angle to maiden combat could be interesting where they're trying to use the environment against each other as well just more things to throw in there but none of this really tops what could be incredible potential for a massive visual even if we don't see the battle like if this happens all off screen and we just imply that it happened what i said can still technically be what happens we've seen attacks like this before and you could do amazing things with the aftermath reveal so we didn't see the fight we didn't see the glass we didn't see any of that but the team comes back, like say there's a time skip, or the place just got destroyed or they were gone, and they step into Vacuo, Jean and the girls. So they step back into Vacuo because that's where it makes sense to portal to if they have a choice, or if they just get spat out where they were gonna go anyway, and they walk through expecting to see Vacuo. And the audience is expecting to see Vacuo. It could be incredible to then step back into the landscape and it's wrecked and covered in chaotic patches and pillars of glass. Massive jagged pieces of glass tearing through the city. It has a punch because it looks so alien. And it also works exceptionally well as a good way to find a destroyed landscape that's more than just, you know, a little blown up or on fire. It's a much more dramatic reveal. Like you could have it just torn apart by war, but then it doesn't look crazily different, it just looks destroyed. But it's meant to be abandoned for a while, so there's no reason to have it still on fire and smoking because that would have gone out. Basically, it's not that visually interesting to just see the remains of old buildings that you sure should be there. It sucks, but it's kind of normal. If you had a landscape covered in glass, spears, and pillars, and wrecked, 
That's pretty awesome. And they could even work out who did it from that. Like, oh, this must be Cinder because it's her thing. Because we've done that before when Ruby figured out that the chess piece must have been Cinder's. And that was black glass, which could also be cool if they wanted to carry that over and make the things she creates black glass at this point. And it could even be a fun misdirect initially, where they think they haven't made it back to Remnant, as the place they arrive in looks so alien and strange before the full picture sort of comes together for them. Now, a few things. Yes, it doesn't actually really work like that with superheating sand into glass it's not 100% accurate and shaping it isn't really real and in science it depends on the silicon of the sand and we don't know vacuous sand and I know all that we're in fantasy we're working with magic and powers and I think it's worth overlooking some of the real for the visual potential next you might be thinking you know completely right that there's no reason they couldn't do this anyway with spears of ice and other things and other powers they just have at hand there's no reason this has to be glass and there's no reason they have to interact with the environment but again it's just a cool thing you can do the option is there so why don't we take it plus it plays into what was a trademark of a character also I think it's interesting to note that my initial idea for this actually came from hearing I think it was a joke I can't remember exactly where it came from but to me the idea of a glassed over desert came from some content around discussing the concept of if there was going to be a nuclear strike on a desert area which of course is horrific and not something you'd ever want to see in real life but it is an interesting concept that we could bring over into fiction a very new and strange depiction of mass destruction in an interesting environment. And lastly also there is another problem you might point out is that you probably don't think Cinder is powerful enough to do things on that scale. And yeah I can't argue with this one either. We could say it's possibly more effective because she's using her powers on a secondary source because the environment is providing part of the equation there. But even if you do that, we've seen the full potential of a maiden with Freya, and while it was super impressive, her wreckage was not whole city size, and it would take some real time and effort to do something on that scale you would think. So you are right in that too. But I bring this up again because this is where it actually gives Sin to the multi-maiden powers, finally. It's literally in her character, it's her entire goal and purpose, and I've said before so many times why she sort of has to get them at some point. You can say she's on a path of failure and that's her theme, but that reduces what you get out of of her as a character in the long run if you stick with that all the way to the end. It's fine to say you want her dead or you want her to die, but that's not practical for our actual story, so her getting more powers is not a bad thing. She's our antagonist, we actually fight. She's way too strong for us to deal with alone, so she's a real threat, and she can still be injured and killed and take hits, and Salem can't. Cinder takes the hits on a story level that Salem can't shoulder, because if Salem was always around, our heroes would automatically just lose, and Salem would get very, very boring, and that's bad and she'd become far less threatening, which is bad. So that's why we have Cinder instead. She actually does a lot of heavy lifting for the plot, and I'm not going to continue to defend that point for people who just hate Cinder. I mean, I can't change your mind, but being practical. We do have also this pesky summer maiden to deal with. People have theories on who it is from the books and so forth, and that's fine, but as an on-screen story, we already have such a huge cast. Are we going to introduce a whole new major power character who, unlike Raven or Winter, the team has no prior ties to as far as we know. You know, they're not a relative or anything like that. It's no one that we know. It's just a person you might know if you read the book, which isn't great. Given that the story, if we get any in Vacuo, is going to be split with the island as well. And we have so many characters we already know to deal with. Not just the existing team, of course, but we also have people like Winter that we want to see what happens to them. Plus, we will have to introduce new characters anyway, like the headmaster will surely be important. Also, on top of all of that, tying in another key player in a full-fledged maiden is a lot of story time. It's going to eat up a lot of time that we may not have. Especially when you only have 12 or so episodes to work with, there's a really good chance that you utilize instead the Maiden's ability to pass on and have the current Summer Maiden bite it pretty early on and pass the powers on, or use the time skip to say it happened in there and we just never get to meet that Maiden, that's also fine. Then you can use that to easily shift the powers onto someone we already know and have investment in. Whether that be good guys, like the front runners are people like Team Coffee and the Happy Huntresses, or, you know, a stretch but not totally impossible people like Nora. Or you have Cinder and she finally gets a double maiden powers and gets to claim extra abilities and that makes her a lot stronger. It frees up her in the story to wreak havoc on Vacuo with waves of massive power and make glass and keep Cinder being a threat. But we still have people on hand like Winter and the team and everyone else who's in Vacuo who apparently is stocked with Huntsman that you could reasonably buy would be able to fend off Cinder 
danger at least a little bit for people to escape and so forth, which is how you avoid the problem of everyone dying, so we can still get away with that. Now, I admit, this whole thing isn't the strongest idea. It basically boils down to that Cinder should do that thing she doesn't need to do anymore because it'd look cool. But more than that, it's just an opportunity to tie back in this little detail that seems pretty much long forgotten, and I'm always a fan of moves like that where you can bring things back together. I really doubt it's in the plan, and I really doubt they will do this, but it just lines up that this character who used to superheat sand to fight now has much more power, a lot more heat at hand, and the story has moved to an area that entirely consists of sand, so I just had to bring it up. But basically, that's all there is to it. It's short and simple. There's a great opportunity to tie in some history, and more than anything, the visuals could be amazing. Imagine the crew coming through a sandstorm, and there's weird refracting light shafts and like almost rainbows everywhere, and it's through the haze of sand, and they're all confused, and it looks like they're on some alien world, and you have no idea what's going on because you haven't seen Vacua yet. And finally they get close enough to see the chaotic mess of destruction and this is jagged glassy structures like spearing through buildings and breaking through walls and the ground is glassy and there's light and refractions going everywhere. It could be a good way to make Remnant look alien for a brief time and we've seen moments like the whale explosion in volume 8 showing that the team is prepared to put in some real work on some very visually impressive sequences especially for a big showcase moment. So between it making sense for her character it being original and new, it being potentially a cool reveal, being a good way to show off some amazing visuals, a good way to spice up combat, and a good way to introduce the concept of using maiden powers more creatively, this just seems like a really fun concept that I really hope they take advantage of. It's like a setup they accidentally stumbled into and doesn't feel purposeful, but I want to see it go through nonetheless. But until next time, my name is Rigo, hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope I did alright.